Well, hello from Bucharest, and thank you for taking the time to offer us this interview. Of course, my pleasure. How are you in these challenging days? I'm all right, thank you. Uh, on a personal basis, I mean, obviously we are in um, uh, in challenging times, as you say, uh, probably most challenging times ever uh, in the history of this uh, industry, and maybe not only for this industry. I mean, we are seeing unprecedented measures uh, imposed by governments, and um, you know, some of it is uh, acting on. Uh, on, on an issue, on a real issue, uh, on, a, on a virus uh, spread. Uh, but I think it has become more complicated than that. Uh, there is a significant economic impact uh, of, of the issue, and also it has become quite politicized. So uh, you are seeing a very complex uh, situation, and uh, you know it, it is really challenging. It is challenging from a conceptual perspective whether the world is doing the right thing, uh, given the times we are in and given the issues we have to deal with. Uh, and also, in a way, how you as a business execute against the ever-changing environment. I mean, you know it that every country has come up with different set of measures. Uh, we are operating to 45 countries, but there are no two countries that would be applying the same approach, the same measures on the, uh, the situation. So it has become quite a mess, quite a zoo in a way. Uh, but that's what we have to deal with. So, uh, uh, And we are trying to best cope with the situation, obviously. But how has the pandemic affected the business of Weezer? It affected the airline industry uh, in general, but how has it affected your business? Yeah, so I, I would say that uh, we are uh, obviously not immune from the situation, so we are deeply affected to an extent that uh, in the early days, in March, April, we uh, had to nearly ground the, the whole airline. I mean, we were operational, so we, didn't, we never stopped flying. Uh, but uh, there was a period when we had uh, around 95% of our capacity on the ground. Now, this is much better now. So in, uh, in August, uh, we ramped up operations to around 80% of our last year's capacity. I think we got it to the highest level in the uh, industry in Europe for, uh, for sure. But now we are seeing another wave of restrictions coming in affecting the, uh, the business. So now capacity is somewhat coming, uh, coming down. So I think we are in a roller coaster business. Um, uh, when it comes to, you know, people's ability to uh, to fly uh, and the restrictions in, imposed by governments limiting that ability, uh, so it's uh, it's an ever changing uh, context of the uh, of the business. But at the same time, I think we have always uh, stayed alerted to uh, opportunities arising for the future. Uh, during the last six months, we have decided to move quite some capacity around. Uh, we opened up 10 new operating bases, uh, we redeployed re around 20-25% uh, of our total fleet capacity. So it's not only that we are managing the issues of the day as it arises, but also we keep investing into the future and we think that as a result we should come out of this crisis as a better airline, as a stronger business. But you have also closed some bases. Which was the main strategy uh, you took in order to deal with this crisis business-wise? We, we, we formally haven't closed any, any bases, so we have maintained all bases. There is one base which we are not able to operate, so it's a temporary suspended, that, that is uh, Georgia Kutaisi, simply because the country is closed, but all other bases remained open, they remained operational. Uh, maybe, okay. you know, we, we had to stop them for some time when we were unable to operate them, but uh, uh, but we maintain the fleet, we maintain the employees, we maintain the crew uh, at every single base, but uh, but we have. It just, you know, we have to manage capacity, certain bases can uh, can operate a higher level of capacity than other bases, uh, but but actually we took a deliberate strategic decision that we are not closing any base. Mm -hmm. But what about the employees? Um, did you have to, to uh, give up at some of them? Yes, unfortunately, uh, we had to uh, um, we had to face the situation that you know we are usually impacted by this uh, this crisis, and as a result, uh, uh, we um, uh, we laid a thousand people off on a total company basis. Uh, that is around twenty percent of our um, employee uh, base. You know, we would hope to rehire most of the people once the situation allows us to uh, to do that. But you know, I would just want to put that in perspective. So, Visa is one of the very few airlines actually in the world that continues to take aircraft deliveries. I mean, we keep growing the fleet. Um, uh, I mean, just uh, in the next uh, 
uh, 20 months or so, we will be taking um, uh, around 20, 20 new aircraft uh, deliveries. So we said at one point these aircraft will have to fly and uh, they have to be crewed uh, and they have to be um, uh, manned, uh, as we say. Um, so it is important that uh, you see it as a temporary measure uh, that we were acting on the very issue um, during these restrictive uh, times. But once the circumstances change and we can fly again, uh, we would be going back to most of these people and we will try to rehire them or even hire other people, new employees in the company. So you are hoping for the better times to come after this uh, pandemic. Uh, what can you tell me about your um, turnover situation? Because in the international media, uh, it is said that Wizard it is one of the companies who had a very good cash position. Um, how has this helped you? And how do you think the business will evolve by the end of the year uh, in this context? Yes, I think um, probably given the times we are in, cash is king. Uh, you know, every company's liquidity is the most important issue uh, because uh, clearly, it, you know, we burn a lot of cash as a as a as a business, as as an industry. Uh, so, in order to have financial resilience, we have to have a strong liquidity position. Wizard got into uh, this whole coronavirus situation with one and a half billion euros of free cash and we have been preserving most of uh, that cash. So we are still very strong. I mean, obviously we are seeing now another wave of restrictions coming in, uh, given the new wave of the uh, of the pandemic. Um, uh, but uh, we are managing this business for liquidity and, 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 and for cash. But from a structural perspective, I also think that uh, um, as we are the lowest cost producer in the industry, we are the lowest cost airline in uh, in Europe, I mean, this is really giving you the long-term strategic advantage coming out of the situation because uh, uh, especially short-haul flying is increasingly a commodity business in commodities lowest cost prevails and we are the lowest cost uh, producers. Uh, so we have been um, very focused financially, but also we have been very adaptive, not only in terms of uh, changing the network uh, and we wanted to recognize where people wanted to go and put up a network to best meet their, uh, their requirements, uh, but also we were the first airline to come up with uh, the new uh, COVID protocol. Um, uh, we put a, a new health and safety protocol out uh, first in Europe. We were the first one signing off uh, with EASA, the regulatory body in, in Europe with, uh, mm -hmm. with that regard. So I think we have been as innovative as possible given the, uh, given the circumstances. Uh, but of course, the business is very focused on cash, on financial liquidity, financial performance. Mm -hmm. Uh, who uh, do you think will be the companies who will suffer the most uh, in the airline industry? The traditional careers, maybe like the one we have in Romania, Theram, or the low-cost companies like yours? No, I think the uh, the traditional companies will suffer much more uh, for, for a few reasons. One is that uh, uh, they started this whole pandemic time with very weak uh, financial uh, situations. I mean, Tarum was already losing money and uh, was not having cash in the uh, in the business. Um, these airlines tend to be connecting airline models. They are connecting uh, passengers. I think that model is killed uh, completely. No one wants to connect, and we are seeing it very clearly that the connecting model will have or will take much longer to recover than the point-to-point -point airline model. This is what we are uh, what what we are doing. Um, and if you look at the, the rate of recovery in the industry, low-cost airlines has, has recovered much more uh, capacity uh, in summertime than, than traditional airlines. And I think as time goes by, um, it, it's going to be a continuous distress, uh, especially on the, uh, on the legacy airline, uh, airline model. Now, the interesting question is that how the states intervene and, and what role they are uh, taking and who they support and who they not support. We think that visa does not require state support. We can manage ourselves with market measures. Uh, but you clearly see that if you look at Romania, I mean, both Storm and Blue Air had to take uh, state aid. Um, and uh, and I don't think that this state aid is going to be sufficient for them to, uh, uh, to get out of this crisis. So quite likely they will be subject to further uh, financial liquidity crisis. And we will see how the governments will decide and whether or not governments would uh, would defend these businesses or would support these businesses. 
Uh, but structurally, clearly, low cost airlines will be the winners of the situation. Uh, traditional carriers will be the losers of the situation. Do you think that many of them uh, will disappear? Uh, they should. Um, I mean, um, I mean, uh, I mean. Look, I mean, if if you look at Romania, for example, uh, Visa Air is significantly larger than Tarom and Blue Air together. Uh, so why is it that the Romanian government decides to uh, uh, to inject liquidity into Tarom and Blue Air while the Romanian people did not vote for these airlines? They voted for Visa Air and they fly Visa Air, uh, but the others are just kept alive by government uh, measures, by government uh, decisions. Uh, which feels like going against the will of the people. Certainly, this is a lot of taxpayers' money, and us in the taxpayer, the citizens will have to ask their governments why they are putting their money uh, into uh, kind of uh, loss-making uh, businesses with no real long-term perspective, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, somewhere else, and why don't they support the airlines uh, who can survive themselves, and they are not subjected to, um, to state support. So, do you think that uh, in the long term, Tarom will will disappear, even though it receives help from the state? Well, I mean, if if you look at it, I mean, Tarom has not made money, um, probably ever, but certainly not in the last ten years. Um, so uh, that business, that company, is not fit to survive, um, and. The government will have to conclude whether it, it would just let the market uh, sort the situation out or they want to keep intervening. But I think government also has to recognize that uh, they are spending Romanian taxpayers' money on Tarum, and Romanian taxpayers don't want to fly Tarum. If Romanian taxpayers wanted to fly Tarum, Tarum would be making money because they would be selling order tickets to the Romanians and the Romanians would be prepared to pay the price. Uh, but they are asking, but apparently that's not the case. Uh, so I think it is a question uh, the government will have to have to answer at one point. Logically, if you look at look at it from a sheer market perspective, uh, Tarom is not a long-term survivor, so that airline should go bust at one point, uh, and uh, it should be backfilled and replaced by market players like ourselves and maybe some uh, uh, some others. Uh, I mean, if a business couldn't make money in the last ten years, and that was the industry's best time ever in his in history, then that airline is never going to make money. And do you think that the COVID-19 crisis could be the, the ending for it? Possibly. Um, I think um, COVID-19 is kind of sorting the industry um, and, you know, differentiates players being structural winners of the industry and structural losers of the, uh, of the industry. I believe that Visa is going to be one of the structural winners. Uh, we come out as a stronger uh, uh, actually, uh, a relatively larger business with bigger market share uh, after the uh, the pandemic, and uh, those airlines who were struggling already prior to, uh, to the pandemic, clearly struggling during the pandemic times, uh, you know, will most likely disappear or will get uh, squeezed uh, quite uh, quite substantially from their current market positions. So, what will happen with these uh, players who will not survive the crisis? Will they be bought by the other companies? Are you considering buying other companies? Uh, no, we are not. Uh, I think we are interested in uh, expanding and extending our operating platform. Um, this is the lowest cost way of uh, delivering this business. Um, this is the most efficient way. I think that benefits the market, that benefits consumers, uh, because uh, it it wouldn't come with complexity. The problem with uh, acquisitions of other businesses that comes with a lot of complexities and it comes with more cost. And that goes against the, uh, the whole philosophy of the business and our business model. So actually we are interested in, um, in keeping the business simple, um, uh, straightforward, so we, we don't want to acquire, but we would be very happy to, uh, to extend our business in Romania. Uh, you know, the reason uh, Wizer is uh is having a really good market share in Romania is because you offer very cheap tickets. And everybody is wondering in this context if this uh, cheap offer will still be, be offered to the, the, the people who want to travel a lot who, and who want to go to city breaks. What will happen with the prices in the low cost industry? Will we have a low cost industry in the, I don't know, in the next five years too? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at if you look at Visa, 
um, you know, we continue to take new aircraft deliveries, so we will benefit from new technology uh, from an economic standpoint, as well as from an environment standpoint. Uh, so that enables us to maintain our fares as low as they used to be. Uh, and that also uh, enables us to actually take market share away from others who would not be in the same position. I mean, if you look at all other airlines, I mean, most of the airlines cancel the aircraft deliveries. They are not taking new aircraft. What means is that uh, their fleet is aging. Uh, the aircraft is going to be less efficient, more costly uh, to, to produce seats and to, to fly. And they will have a, a competitive disadvantage just opening up uh, even to a bigger extent than what it is today. So I think that's going to make us more competitive and I think we will be even more appealing to the, uh, to the people, to the traveling public, because we will bring in um, low fares on a continuous basis. By all other airlines, we are not be in a position to support uh, low fares or they will go bust because they can't afford to, uh, to apply low fares. So as far as we are concerned, absolutely. So we guarantee low fares to the market as uh, previously. Uh, which role does Romania play in your strategy in the medium and long term? Oh, Romania is one of our strategic markets. I mean, you are very important to us. I think Vizair has done very well in uh, Romania. Uh, we cover the whole country, so it is not only Bucharest what we are flying, but we, uh, we fly almost every airport in uh, Romania. Uh, we have a large number of um, operating bases. Uh, we are the largest airline. Uh, as said, we are larger than Tarum and Blue Air uh, together. We are the market leader in the country. So absolutely strategic and we are looking for uh, continuous expansion of opportunities. Just very recently, we, op we opened Bacau as, uh, as, as, as the newest base in, uh, in Romania. And this is right in the middle of, uh, of uh, COVID-19. Uh, the, the base will start operating in October. We made the announcement a couple of months ago. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we are highly committed to Romania and we keep investing in the country. And maybe you are considering uh, launching new internal routes? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I think we tried uh, tried it with Luz, uh, to, uh to Bucharest. That didn't work at that time, but obviously we are seeing uh, quite a bit of a trend change. We are seeing that domestic travel has gained a lot of traction uh, recently, especially uh, influenced by COVID-19. So we are revisiting these issues, but I don't want to make a, a, a premature commitment here, but we are we are looking at it. You are looking at. Um, and how would you describe the local market comparing it to others where you are active? Maybe uh, the origin country of Wizer. How would you compare these two markets in terms of flying industry? Uh, I, I think I think Romania is a great market. Um, you know, you are a fairly large uh, geography. It's a fairly large country. Um, so we have uh, a very good coverage on the regions of, uh, of Romania. So I think we are very well spread in terms of network. We have not been able to do that in many countries, uh, either because the country is too small or we have not gotten to the level of uh, penetration of the market like in, uh, in Romania. Um, I think you are very comparable, comparable to Poland with that regard. It's a similar size of geography with a number of um, um, regional airport opportunities. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a competitive market, you know, we have a number of players, local players, international players to compete with, but for so long as we are the lowest cost producer in the industry, I think we are very, uh, very comfortable with, uh, with competing. And I think competition is good because uh, it certainly benefits the market, it benefits consumers because they have choices to be, uh, to be made. But I think it's also good uh, to the industry, to the players, because you, you become a better business by being contested and competed. So we, we actually quite like competition because we learn from it and you know competition makes us a better business. And with that regard, uh, Romania is a competing uh, and competitive market. So yeah, I mean, I think Romania is a, is a perfect fit for the strategy of Visa. And um, what is your objective for our market? Uh, what is your target for Romania for the next years? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we have built a franchise of around 10 million uh, passengers a year. Uh, you know, I said, you know, that makes us the largest airline in the, uh, in the country. Uh, we think that, uh, you know, uh, on a normalized basis, so let's take COVID-19 out of the equation, but when, you know, life goes back to normal in five, six years, we should be able to double that franchise uh, in the form of uh, flying more on existing routes, but also opening a lot more new routes, maybe new bases in other airports. Uh, I think we should also see how Romania will develop in terms of airports. I mean, we know that there are a few airports being discussed for, uh, for development and, you know, we would be certainly taking kind of a pioneering role 
in carrying the, uh, the flag of low cost flying in the, uh, in the country. How many airports do you think a country like Romania this big should have? I think it really depends on your geographical setup and also uh, other means of transportation, how effective you know the train system is, how effective the road system is. Um, but you know we are, I think, very comfortable at the moment flying around 10 airports in, uh, uh, in, in, in Romania. So I think we have a good coverage in the, uh, in, in the country. I don't think there is a good or bad number here or you know the right, right number here because uh, you know it is subject to other other matters outside the, uh, the industry, but uh, um, I think about the size what we are flying is, is, is the right, right way to go. I'm asking because before the COVID-19 crisis, there was a problem of capacity on the uh, principal airport in Romania, the Autopen airport. And I was wondering if uh, this was a problem for you too. To some extent, yeah. I mean, you know, Bucharest has always been kind of a question in terms of airport development. Um, you know, you had Bonessa Airport and then it got closed and you have Autopeni, uh, which is kind of running uh, up to its limit uh, when it comes to capacity. I think that was this Bucharest South Airport. Um, they were discussing whether or not, you know, a new airport should be open. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think Bucharest will have to create more capacity uh, over time. Now, short, short term, probably it's okay because COVID-19 took a lot of capacity out and a lot of traffic out of the, uh, uh, the system. But over time, certainly airport development should take place and more capacity should be created in Bucharest. And do you think that reopening uh, Bonasa would be a solution? I think it's one of the options to, uh, to be looked at. I mean, Bonasa Airport is a small airport, so, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is a very sensible airport. I think it's a good airport but it would need to be significantly expanded in terms of terminal capacity and movement capacity. And I don't know whether there would be support for that, uh, but that's certainly one of the options. Uh, which would be the, the measures you would need in order to develop more in Romania? I think, I think we need uh, short term, we need governments to lift restrictions. Uh, uh, and they should be smarter as opposed to administratively prohibiting people to uh, to enter a country like closing the borders or uh, or making it kind of impossible for citizens to travel. I think those measures have to go away. Um, personally, I think vaccination is is going to ease the whole pandemic uh, situation, but even even until until that time, maybe more testing should be uh, looked at as an alternative to uh, uh, to administrative restrictions. So, I think there should be more freedom to be given back to people when it comes to uh, to, to travel. Uh, secondly, I would say that in case of Romania, the government should kind of stay out of the game uh, and they should not be getting involved in terms of financial support and subsidizing and bailing out Tarom and Blue Air. If the market saves them, great. If the market doesn't save, save them, they should let, let them go uh, as opposed to stepping in. Uh, and thirdly, um, you know, as the country is, is is very well developing in terms of air traffic, um, you know, it has to be enabled on the infrastructure side. So the right kinds of airports should be in place. Uh, the right sorts of development should be put in place. And I think that's where the governments uh, government should come in to support those developments, like the development of the uh, Bucharest airport system. We hope that they will hear you. Uh, what will happen in the scenario that another lockdown uh, will be implemented in, in the world, not only in Romania? You know, we, we kind of hope, I, I, was, I was hoping, maybe that that's, remains a hope, that uh, we learned something from the first lockdown. And I think one of the things we should have learned uh, was that, um, you know, at least on a European Union basis, we should have acted more orchestrated and more uh, coordinated. Uh, it doesn't seem to me that it's actually happening and any learnings are taken by, uh, by governments because still every country is acting on its own as opposed to trying to go coordinated on, uh, on some of the measures. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite bad. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. You know, as far as we are concerned, uh, we are looking at demand. Um, approachable demand and stimulatable demand and you know we put capacity against that demand so if 
the market gets shut down completely and there is no demand or it's it's basically impossible for people to uh, to travel obviously we have no choice but to you know to stop flying rules to uh, suspend uh, 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 capacity but if it's a uh, uh, substantial demand or you know we can stimulate demand of course we got, we are very interested in in tapping into that demand and 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 continue to uh, to stimulate it uh, so it really depends on what kind of measures we be put in place how those measures will affect people's ability to uh, to travel and you know what does that really mean in terms of capacity management uh, to the airline but you know if you kind of think about this obviously uh, for us uh, by having the strongest liquidity position and by being the lowest cost producer in the industry, uh, any situation should be less painful than to the other guys. Uh, I mean, simply whatever storm is coming, I think we can weather that storm much more effectively than others. It doesn't mean that it's not painful to us or we are immune, but I think we are just relatively better at than the other guys. You have mentioned the state aids offered to Tehran, but they were not... Uh... Uh, only offered in Romania to the state company. This happened also in Germany for the Lufthansa group. I think that was wrong too. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying that Romania alone did something wrong. Uh, I think all countries uh, where they put up state aid to our airlines, they did they did wrong uh, because this is all money wasted. I mean, I bet you that this money will never be repaid to a. Uh, uh, to the states, I mean, it just gets wasted, and uh, and you know there were not put any measures in place, you know, for forcing these airlines to uh, to restructure and to to become economically more efficient uh, or anything like that. I mean, it was just money given to them, and they just wasted all that uh, that money. Whether this is France, whether this is Germany, the Netherlands, or Romania, or any other place, it is the same. So I think Romania is not unique with uh, with that regard. But I just personally think that this was a. Uh, not a well thought through, uh, thought through approach. Uh, I think they they should have reconsidered uh, a number of other aspects of uh, what they are doing uh, because at the end of the day, you know, this is taxpayers' money wasted. What do you think would be the best solution for them? It would be interested, interesting for them to, I think, to hear your point of view. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I, I think I think we, we, we could step in. I mean, should Tarom uh, disappear or Blue Air disappear from the market, you know, we could step in and we could replace that uh, that capacity. You know, this is what we have done in a number of countries. This is what we have done in Hungary, uh, for example. Money of Hungary Airlines went down and we replaced the capacity of, uh, uh, of, uh, of that airline. You know, we became de facto the national carrier of, uh, of Macedonia. There is no local airline. So I don't, I don't think that there is a recipe in aviation that you have to have a national carrier. I mean, the market can um, can come in and can uh, sort it out actually more effectively than uh, than with the national carrier. So I don't think Romania should be dependent on on Blue Air and Tarom. And if you know if they don't work, they don't work. And I think you just have to face the reality. Uh, and you know, we as a, a strategic player in the market, uh, you know, we could make actually firm commitments to uh, the government or to the market that we would do more and you know we would not leave the country without service so i think we could do much more of a structural step up in uh, in in romania and i think this should be considered as an alternative as an option versus just throwing money out of the window and supporting these airlines maybe tarom would be bought by by a different company maybe by the golf careers uh, good luck with that <laughs> I mean, I mean the, the, the golf carriers are not in a very good shape either, so uh, they have their own problems. So I'm not sure that there are too many airlines running around with a lot of money that they want to waste it uh, buying uh, failing businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. In order to close the discussion, please tell me where do you see the future of aviation um, as a result of this impact of COVID-19 in the in the next years. I think I think I think the future of aviation is uh, is 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 great. Um, I think it's going to be very prosperous. Uh, mobility is one of the key issues of people. I think people want to go. They want to discover the world. They want to fulfill themselves. So I think it is very important that uh, infrastructure is created for that. But I think what's going to change in aviation is is the players. Um, those players who who can innovate, who can adopt, who can change, and can be economically efficient, and can be um, 
sensible to the uh, to the changing requirements of the consumer. So you as a business can be relevant to the changing context of your business. Beers survive and they do better. And those who are lagging behind and cannot adopt will have a hard time and sooner or later they will uh, go out of business. So if you look at this industry 10 years from now, I think you will see a few of the current players, but you wouldn't see quite a few of the existing players. And um, for the the viewers who are interested in the low cost uh, offers you are offering, should they expect any more offers in the future period of time? Oh, absolutely. I think we, we, we have a strategic interest to continue to engage with the consumers and uh, continue to stimulate the market on a constant basis. So yes, I mean, we will keep coming back with new routes, new uh, new offers, new promotions, uh, keeping prices very low. Um, and that's what we will keep doing. Okay. Um, would you give any advice for um, other executives in, in your business or would you share with them um, a bit of your experience from this uh, period of challenging times? Well, you know, I, I would say that, you know, for every business, but certainly in the, in the airline business, I mean, the business should be run for cash. Uh, and uh, if, you know, uh, so staying with Brewer and Tarum, I mean, you know, those airlines have never had liquidity in their life. I mean, they've never had cash in the in the business. So obviously that makes the business model incredibly vulnerable. So if that is a bad time coming and that hits the business, you are blown out of business basically uh, next day. And that, actually that's what happened. Um, and I think the business has to be managed for cash because uh, the airline business is a cyclical business. Uh, it goes with the cycle and an economic downturn uh, initiated by whatever, you know, could make a profound impact on your business performance. So uh, uh, you have to be resilient. So it's not only, you know, to enjoy the good times, but you also have to, uh, to deal with the bad times. Thank you very much for uh, this message and for this Thank interview. You.